Hello, this is how to install the VNC server, Tiger VNC, on Fedora Workstation 42. These are my notes and mariusp.github.io, the VNC page. Scroll until you get to Fedora greater than or equal to 42. Fedora Workstation uses the GNOME desktop. So we will need to enable the SSH server first. We do that by connecting to the machine. In this case, it's a fresh installation of Fedora or Station 42 inside a QM Invert Manager virtual machine. So first of all, we need to enable the SSH server. We open the terminal. sudo Let's see the command systemctl enable. Minus minus now, and the name of the target is sshd. Okay, so we're at this line. Asks for the sudo password. So that's the password of the only user that's being created by the Fedora installer. And now we actually need to disconnect from the graphical user interface session. It's probably Wayland by default, but we still need to disconnect. So let's do that. Log out. Okay. From this moment on, we only need the IPv4 address of the virtual machine. In this case, it's ending with 207. The rest we're going to do via an SSH connection. We're on the computer where we will install the VNC client. So we will have two computers, the VNC client and the VNC server. The VNC client is actually the computer that you're seeing right now. And the VNC server is the QMU Fedora 3042 virtual machine. So on the computer that you want to connect from, where the VNC client will run, you will need to install the VNC client RPM package. If you're on Fedora, this is the command line to use. sudo dnf install tiger VNC. I'm on a different Linux operating system. I already have tiger VNC client installed. So we'll go to the next step. We want to connect using SSH to the computer. The IPv4 address ends with 207. Okay, do we want to continue? Yes. We know the password of the only Linux user that was created during the install. And now we're going to install the server part of the Tiger VNC packages, RPM packages. It's going to update the metadata, the list of available packages in the various repositories that are enabled by default. As you can see, I have installed fresh Fedora 42 workstation and I chose to also enable additional RPM package repositories. So that's probably this one, PyCharm, Fracek, Google Chrome, and non-free NVIDIA driver, non-free Steam. Let's see what is being installed, the Tiger VNC server, and something related to X11. Tiger VNC does use an X server. I'm OK, so I'm going to press Y, press Enter. Yes, again. The installation finished successfully. Now make sure that you're never using the user root 
when you run VNC password or VNC server, just use your regular Linux user account, the only one that was created by the Fedora installer, the one that's a sudoer. Because we're connected via SSH, we can actually copy paste text. We can um, paste the selection by clicking on the scroll wheel of the mouse. So that's a middle click. Asks for two passwords. The VNC password for full access needs to have at least six characters. And the second password for view only. only. I never provide the view only password. So choose no and go next. Now we want to start the VNC server. We're using the display colon one, which means the XORG session colon one. Make sure you're not connected in graphical user interface mode to your Fedora computer. Otherwise you will need to increase this number. Um, there is some issue here. The password was already provided before in the VNC password step, but it's still required a second time. Hopefully this bug will be fixed. So the same rules, a um, full access password that needs to be at least six characters long. And no view only password and enter. It takes a while, I know, three seconds for the GNOME desktop to start. So do wait until you get at this line where it says log file is one dot log. At this point, the VSC server is started and running correctly and all of its children processes are okay. There's an X session, there's a GNOME three session, etc. GNOME shell. Okay. And in another terminal, we can now connect to the VNC server control shift D in my case. VNC viewer, IPv4 address, colon one. Colon one means the first session. Asks for the full access password, the one that's six characters long. And that's it. We're connected to the Fedora machine, which uh, is uh, better than what we get from here, because in uh, VNC we can resize the screen resolution easily. You just resize the Tiger VNC client window or your um, VNC client window. You can have all sorts of interesting resolutions like this one. And also you can copy paste text. If I can change easily the resolution and I, if I can copy paste text and if I don't see wrong cursors and the performance is okay. And if I don't see refresh repainting issues, then that is a graphical user interface remote solution that works correctly for me. Okay, we can do everything in here. We can open the calculator. The menus are really snappy. Message box, the model dialogues mark work okay. System about. Everything's okay. Now we can stop the graphical user interface session in two ways. We could uh, close the foregrounded VNC server. VNC server by default wants to background itself such that uh, it uh, leaves free your uh, prompt in your 
terminal shell. But in this case, we have used the parameter minus FG to keep the process foreground such that we can see what is writing to standard output and we can close it easily by just pressing Ctrl C. The VNC client has closed automatically. The VNC server has stopped. The GNOME session has stopped. We can see how many VNC servers are running. VNC server minus minus help. There's this command line parameter minus list. Says that no Tiger VNC VNC server session is running. Which is what we want. As much as possible, do close all of the sessions once you do not need them. Similarly to an RDP remote desktop protocol connection, if you don't close the server, the session will survive. So you can disconnect from the viewer as many times as you want. Your session will be preserved. Let's and open the calculator, close the session. And as you can see, the VNC server and GNOME session is still alive. You can just reconnect whenever you want. And the session is still there. As an alternative to using two terminal graphical user interface terminal application tabs or two terminals, where in one you do things using the SSH client and on the other you're using the VNC viewer, the VNC client, you could do everything in a single terminal. And that's if you run a huge command line like this one. Let's see what the command line does. So let's start with the executable, which is SSH. So that's slash USR slash bin slash SSH. This is the SSH client. Then we provide the connection details for the SSH client, username on the Fedora machine, IPv4 of the Fedora machine. So that's ending in 207. Then we say, let's do a TCP port forward. We're port forwarding the port 5901 on the Fedora machine towards the current machine where the VNC client runs on the same TCP port 5901. Then on the inside the SSH connection, we're running the commands VNC server colon one minus FG. So we're keeping the connection foreground. And once this command is successful, we'll be starting a VNC viewer on the port 5901 on localhost, that's port forwarding using an SSH tunnel to the Fedora machine port 5901. So that's why we start the VNC viewer like this, VNC viewer, then localhost or 127.0.0.1 and colon one is the VNC session. So let's see all of this thing working. asks for the SSH password. We're still at this part. And now the VNC client, the VNC viewer has tried to connect, but it could not because there's this sleep 20 seconds and it also needs to wait for the GNOME shell session to start. That's not a problem, we're just reconnecting. After we see that the SSH, the GNOME shell session has finished by seeing the log line, log file, ending with colon one dot log. So now we could reconnect. Yes, 
now it asks for a second password and this time is the read write full access VNC password which is six characters long. And this is it. We have just started the VNC server and the VNC client using a single command line. This is the VNC client, this is the VNC server, but we have also done a port forward, which is useful if, for instance, the Fedora machine has a firewall that only allows incoming SSH connections towards the listening on TCP port 20 SSH server. Or maybe you, this um, Fedora machine is behind network address translation and on the network address translation router you have a port forwarding rule for port 22 and not for the other ports on the Fedora machine. And the Fedora machine is not accessible from the internet because it has a non-routable network address translated IPv4 address, which is actually the case in this case. It's actually double NAT because there's a NAT server that's being run by Vert Manager, the virtualization software, and the second one, which is by my ISP internet service provider. Okay, so you could do all of the actions that you would normally do when you're connected in graphical user interface mode to a Fedora computer. This is it. The instructions still work because in Fedora, there are still RPM packages for the X server or the Tiger VNC server that still allows to be started by using VNC server. There's still a GNOME shell session for X11, etc. This is it. This is how you install the Tiger VNC VNC server on the Fedora Workstation 42, the Linux operating system that's using GNOME Shell, and how you connect to the VNC server. I'm using the VNC client also from Tiger VNC, but you could use other VNC clients, including from a macOS computer or a Windows computer or a Android phone. Thank you.